Not so fast, the swing speed study. Everyone wants to hit the golf ball farther and add swing speed. A lot of it has to do with what we see on TV in the professional game. There's no question that at the pro level, golf has evolved to a power game, and it all started with Tiger Woods rising to the top. The name of the game is to hit it as far as possible off the tee, keep it in play, and be proficient enough with your wedge and putter to convert birdies. So, Mark Brody's revolutionary strokes gained analysis and his book Every Shot Counts clearly shows distance can be king. Golfers can separate themselves more from each other in their ability to score lower by hitting the ball farther. I've written about this before and I don't deny these findings. I just believe the takeaway for everyday golfers can become a little murky. I've seen plenty of players excel at this game without tremendous distance. That being said, I'm not against any golfer trying to figure out ways to hit the ball farther. If you want to hit the ball farther, I think you have a few options. 1. Increase your swing speed. Most people advocate this method. 2. Hit the ball closer to the sweet spot. I like this one personally. 3. Make sure you're playing with the correct equipment. I also believe in this. I believe number 2 and number 3 are reasonable ways to add distance to anyone's game, and I've written articles about that before. However, in my opinion, adding speed to your swing is not the slam dunk that most people think. I don't think it's completely necessary either. What is reasonable? Tour pros swing speed their drivers anywhere from 110 to 125 miles per hour. These are the speeds required to launch the ball 300 yards and farther. Anytime they can add a few miles per hour to their swing, it could mean the difference of making cuts and cashing bigger paychecks. Their livelihoods are literally at stake. This website is intended for everyday golfers and my goal is to help filter out all the noise out there and get you thinking realistically about your game. You're not playing golf to cash a paycheck. Hopefully you are playing first and foremost to have fun and enjoy yourself and have a secondary desire to lower your handicap over time. In order to add speed to your game and hit the ball much farther, you will likely need to start some kind of serious fitness regimen and put in a lot more practice. I'm certainly not against you doing that, but it will just require more of your time. As recreational golfers that have jobs and other obligations in our lives, that time is usually not there for us. But what if I told you that you don't necessarily need to increase your swing speed to lower your scores? A little bit of swing speed data for you. I was interested to find out the relative swing speed of golfers based on their handicap level. So I had my friends over at Swingbite run an analysis. Their popular swing analyzer is used by thousands of golfers when they practice. And it's an interesting way to see what's going on in various golfers games when you take a top level view. We took driver and 7 iron swing speeds around 800k total shots and separated them by handicap level. As you can see, there's a very clear correlation between playing ability and swing speed. As handicap goes down, swing speed goes up. This is not a complete surprise at all. What is interesting is just how fast the lower handicaps are performing relative to the players in the 20 to 35 region. They're not all that different. For example, a golfer in the 30 handicap region had a swing speed of 88 miles per hour versus 95 miles per hour when you get to single digits. With players in the 0 to 5 handicap range, drivers are topping out at about 95 miles per hour and 7 irons at about 75 miles per hour. Depending on how efficient their swings are, this could represent upwards of 250 yards with the driver and about 140 yards with the 7 iron. Whoa, wait a second, that's not that far. Distance is nice, but again, I will never dispute that hitting the ball farther can help you lower your scores. What I can dispute is that you don't need tremendous distance in order to reach your golfing goals. I have seen plenty of players who can't hit their drives more than 230 yards shoot in the 70s without breaking a sweat. What you see on TV is just not realistic, and you should stop using that as even a remote benchmark for your game. I hope seeing the data from Swing Bite will help you realize that some of the best amateur golfers are not swinging as fast as you think they are. If you want to set a goal for yourself to add 3 to 5 miles per hour to your swing, I think that it's extremely reasonable and can be within your reach. However, going from 90 miles per hour with your driver to 110 miles per hour is probably not going to happen unless you're willing to go to some extremes. Most golf courses are going to be in the 5800 to 6500 yard range, which doesn't require 275 plus drives or 170 yard 7 irons to score well. If you're playing on a 7300 yard professional setup, then yes, I would tell you to start thinking about working on swinging the club much harder. 
There are other parts of the game you could focus your time on rather than just trying to play the distance game. <coughs> your short game. Pounding a golf ball incredibly far is just not in the cards for most golfers, and that's okay. You can still score extremely well without doing it. 